Welcome to physics class. In this video, I'm talking about scalar and vector quantity. The aspect that we are going to check in this video is to check more than two forces acting at a point. If you haven't watched my previous video on two forces acting between angle 0 degree and 90 degree, which is the acute angle and also between angle 90 degree and 180 degree, which is the obtuse angle. Kindly pause this video right now and we'll go back and watch the video. But in this video, I'll be talking about more than if you have more than two vectors acting at a point, then what's going to happen? Now, to calculate the resultant force of more than two forces acting at a point, that means we we'll have to consider the horizontal and also the vertical component of the force. Now, suppose this side is given as our x-axis and better still y-axis so that you guys will not be confused with it. And this side is minus y-axis. This side is taken to be our positive x-axis, right? And let's take this side to be negative x axis. Now, looking at the case, let's say the force for the force force is acting at this point, right? It's acting towards the side, which is called force F one. Then we have another force acting toward the side, which is called force F two, right? Then let's say we have another force acting at from this point toward the side, and it's, it's called force F theory. Then let's say we have another force acting from this point towards the side. Then let's call this force force F4. Exactly. Now in this case, we are having more than two forces acting at this point, right? But at different angle to each other. Let's say, let's consider this angle to be our angle of force F4, which is theta 4. Theta represents angle in this case. Then let's consider this angle to be our angle of the force F1, which is theta 1. Then let's consider this angle to be the angle of force F2, which is theta 2, right? Then let's consider this as our angle of force F3, which is called theta 3. Exactly. So now, how are we going to calculate the resonant force, right? So that's the next thing we need to consider. The resonant force, or in this case, is going to be the sum of the total force that are present or that are acting at this point. But we will have to resolve each and every force that are present in this diagram to both their horizontal components and also their vertical components. So resolving all the forces in both horizontal and vertical components. We all know that talking about horizontal, we always use cost, right? And in terms of vertical, we all make use of what of sign. So what will happen in this case is that suppose we have the horizontal component, right? Horizontal component, which is also known as the X component. The force Talking about, talking about force F1, we are going to resolve our force F1 into its component, right? So here is going to be F1, since it is horizontal, that will be what? Cos theta 1, the angle that F1 makes to the point, right? To the point of X axis. Then after that, then we are going to have it, we add it, or let me just take it one by one. Let's say we have force F2, which is this case, right? That will be cos theta 2 because it is acting at the positive side of the x axis, which is the horizontal component. Right? So after that, we have our force F3. The force F3 in this case is acting at the negative side of the x axis, which is the horizontal component. Then here we are going to have it to be negative force F3 cos theta 
theory. Then after that, we have our force F4. In this case, F4 is acting at the negative side of the horizontal component, right? So in this case, we are going to have it to be minus F4 cos theta 4. Exactly. So after that, we quickly move to the vertical component. The vertical components now. Which is also known as the Y component. So the Y component in this case now, we are going to resolve each each force. Or let me just say each each force into its vertical component. Resolving each each force, force into its vertical component, we are going to have our force F1 in this case. That will be F1 will be sine theta 1. Because in terms of talking about vertical, we are interested in sine theta. So we are going to have to be F1 sine theta 1. Why? Because it's the force acts towards the world's positive y axis. Right? Then after that, we move to F2. F2 is acting downward. That's towards the negative y axis. That will be minus F2 sine theta 2. Right? Then let's move to F3. F3 is also acting towards the world's negative side of the y axis. Then we are going to have to be minus F3 sine theta 3. Then after that, we move to F4. F4 is acting positively. It's acting at the positive side of the y axis, right? So we are going to have it to be F4 sine theta 4. Then after that, what we will have to do is that we are going to ask, we are going to add, or let me just say, we are going to take the algebra sum of the horizontal component and also the algebra sum of the vertical component. So as case may be, we are going to have it to be x equal, which is our horizontal component, that will be f1 cos theta 1, right? Then plus f2 cos theta 2, plus f3 cos theta 3, right? Then plus f4 cos theta 4. But one major thing is that, the after the taking the algebra sum, we will have to consider the direction, right? Considering the direction, here, the sign here is negative. The sign here is also what? Negative. Which means our F3 here, we are going to have it to be negative F3. Right? And our F4 here is going to be negative F4. Then this is our X component. Then let's move to Y components. Moving to Y components, we are going to consider both. We are going to consider the, all the forces that we resolve into vertical components. Then we take the algebra sum. Taking the algebra sum, we are going to have it to be F1 sine theta 1, right? Then, here we are considering direction, right? We are going to have it to be minus F2 sine theta 2, right? Then, after that, we are going to have it to be minus F3 sine theta 3, right? Then, plus F4 sine theta 4. That's very good. So, after that, are we going to leave our answer like this? No, it's impossible. Why? We still need to consider the x and also the y components. Now to get the resultant force, we are going to resolve this x and y components. We are going to solve it using Pythagoras theorem now. Using Pythagoras theorem. We are going to have it to be thus our resultant force square equals to s square plus y square, right? Then we are going to have to be our resultant force equals to root of s square plus y square. So that's so it. So as the case may be, whenever we are talking about more than two forces that are acting at a particular point, the first thing we need to consider is that we are going to resolve each forces acting on the object at that point. We are going to resolve them into their horizontal components and also their vertical component. After that, we take the algebra sum of those forces we resolve into both horizontal and vertical components. Then, we are going to use the Pythagoras theorem to calculate for the resultant force. So, let's see the question I'm having here. Suppose we are given a diagram and the diagram shows four forces acting at this object, right? So we are now asked to calculate for the horizontal force, right? So we are asked to calculate the horizontal force acting on this point or this particle P, right? So 
to go with this question, it's very simple. The first thing we need to do is that we are going to resolve all the forces into their respective horizontal and vertical components. Considering the horizontal components, right? Horizontal components. Component, which is the x-axis, right? This side is our x-axis, this side is our negative x-axis, and this is positive x-axis, right? So, and this side is what negative y axis, and this side is taken to be, is taken to be that's positive y axis, right? So, in this case, what I'm going to do is that my term Newton is acting at this or at this particle at positive x axis, right? So, here in this case, I'm going to have it to be f1 cos theta, but here that will be 10. Because the angle here is 30 degree, right? That's my force F1, which is equal to this. Then also force F2. Force F2 now, my F2 is actually acting at 0 0.0 degree here in this case, right? It's acting at 0 0.0 degree here. So what happens is that I'm going to have it to be theory cos 0 degree, right? Then after that, I move to force F3. Which is 6 newton, right? So I'm having force of 6 newton acting towards this side, right? At this point. So what actually happens is that I'm going to add the F theory to be equal since it is towards what? Towards the negative x axis, right? So since it is towards the negative x axis, I'm going to have it to be minus 6, right? Then multiply by cos 60. And then let's move to F4. So force F4 in this case now is actually here, yeah, right? It is acting at what angle? If you look at this angle, this component, this y axis is perpendicular to what this negative x axis, right? So in this case, the angle to which this force is acting is taken to be what 90 degree, right? So here I'm going to have it to be that's theory root, theory root theory, right? Then cos 90 degree. Then let's move to vertical components. Vertical components now. So for the vertical components now, we are going to consider our force F1 acting along the vertical component. So here, our force F1 is taken to be 10, right? And it's acting at points at angle 30 degree to our, y, our positive y axis, right? So in this case, I'm going to have it to be that's 10 sine 30 degree right then after that i'm going to have force f2 which is 3 newton right so 3 newton is acting at 0, 0 0.0 degree so in this case i'm going to have it to be 3 sine 0 degree right so the next one i'm going to have f force f3 then my force f3 is acting at the positive side right so positive side that's 6 newton acting at at the negative side rather our force F theory is acting at negative side to see angle 60 degree, right? So here I'm going to have it to be minus 6 sine 60 degree. Then what of force F4? Force F4 in this case is theory root n and it's acting at angle 90 degree, right? So here I'm going to have it to be theory root theory newton, right? Then sine 90 degree. So after that, I'll have to take the algebra sum of the horizontal components, right? So here, I'm going to have the horizontal components, horizontal components, right? Let me just say horizontal vector, vector to be, that's x, which is equal to 10 cos 30 degree, right? Plus 30 cos 0 degree, minus 6 cos 60 degree, then plus theory root theory, cos 90 degree right then after that i will move to my y components my y component in this case that will be 10 sine 30 degree right then plus 2 theory sine 0 degree then minus 6 sine 60 degree then plus theory root theory sine 90 degree then what's going to be my x and y so in this case 
So after pressing everything here, then cos start I have 5 root 3 plus 3 cos 0, which is 3. Then everything here, I'm having it to be this. Then my y axis, after pressing it one by one, I'm having it to be 5 plus 0 minus 3 root 3 plus 3 root 3. So in this case now, this 3 will cancel this out. I'm going to have this cancel this out. Then I'm having my x axis to be 5 root 3, right? And my y axis to be 5. So after that, these are the components of x and y axis. Then the next thing I will have to do is that I need to find the resultant force of both x and y. Now to find the resultant force using Pythagoras theorem, then let's consider, let's say I have force x and y acting at angle 90 degree to each other, right? Then the resultant force is taken to be the what interaction of both force x and y axis, right? So this interaction represents my resultant force, right? So this is my x axis, and my x is taken to be 5 root 3. Then after that, my y is taken to be 5, right? So using Pythagoras theorem, using Pythagoras theorem. Using Pythagoras theorem, right? I'm going to have it to be r square equals to y square plus x square. R equals to root of y square plus x square, which I'm going to have to be r equals to root of 5 square plus 5 root td or square, right? So present this on calculator. That's 10. Newton, right? To calculate for the direction now, let's say we are asked to calculate for the direction. The direction is taken to be theta equals to tan inverse, right? Of x, of x, y rather over x component, right? So in this case now, my theta will be tan inverse of course my y, that's 5 over my x component is taken to be 5 root theta. Right? Then theta equals to present everything here on calculator. I'm going to have it to be tan inverse of 0 0.577. Right? Then my theta equals to 30 degree. So that's just the direction. So if you find this video helpful, kindly click on the subscription button and do well to share the video with your friends. Thanks for watching.